Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And today, well, I've got my paint set out and then I've picked a reference photo. This is rather kind of gothic church. I've been feeling a little, I don't know, like unmotivated or unfocused recently. And um, yeah, so I thought I'd just, what I really want to do is just paint, do some experimenting and see what happens. So I'm going to film these and um, if they're good you'll get to see them and if they're not then you probably won't. Uh, but yeah I'm just going to try and uh, try and paint every day. I will get a video up every day but um, yeah the ones that I feel like oh yeah this is pretty good then I'll edit, maybe do a voiceover, um, talk you through what I've what I've done in that particular one and uh, yeah get it up on YouTube for you. So today I've got this reference photo, it's a little bit dark, quite a dramatic looking church and it was quite a dramatic looking day when I took the photo, it was kind of quite stormy. Um, it's uh, obviously this kind of perspective to think about there, this is actually you can kind of see that the you know the perspective lines go off that way and that way but you can see there's quite strong perspective lines heading upwards as well and um, so this is pretty good like three point perspective because you've got your kind of two points here and here where these lines would tend to this point and these lines would tend to this point but actually there's another one here um, up here where all the vertical lines tend to that uh, point up there um, so yeah so you can keep that um, and keep keep that kind of dramatic focus kind of going up, or you can kind of straighten it all out and have all of these like little pillars and things um, kind of nice and vertical. Um, I quite like the kind of three point perspective on this one. I think it helps with it looking nice and dramatic and gothic. So I might keep that. I'm working on uh, Archer's block today. And this is a little bit bigger than I normally work for like architectural sketches. Um, and yeah, I wanted to do that just because I feel like I've been kind of keeping things quite small and tight. And I thought I'd see what happens if I just kind of scale it up a little bit. So I'm going to do pencil sketch uh, because I can't let go of a pencil sketch. Can't sketch straight into pen. Um, but I will. Um, I'll try and keep the pencil sketch quite quick and then um, yeah just get the basic shapes in there and then I'll go in with a fine liner pen. So yeah which one? Probably a 0.3 today but let's start with pencil. So I start by sketching in a horizon line and then trying to get in like the corners of the building. So the one that's kind of closest to me, um, trying to work out how tall the tower is, and then trying to get the like the sides of the buildings in. I'm doing this very, very lightly to start with, and I'll kind of put the lines in a little bit more, a little bit more strongly um, when I when I'm a bit more confident about where they go. What I'm doing here is just trying to measure, so I get the tower the right height. So if I measure the um, the building from here to here, and then add that on, then I get to the top of the tower, and then I've got maybe half of that again for the uh, for the pointy bits on top. So if this is my height of my tower here, then the top of the tower is here, and then the top of my pointy bits would be up here so I've made the drawing a little bit too high on the page I think so that's why I like doing things in pencil first I can just bring that all down a bit and then again I can do the same measuring with the building so going from this corner to this edge and this corner to this edge and my intuition tells me that this side will be shorter because that side of the building is actually shorter but actually when you measure it it's not this side is shorter so 
I've got my centre point in the wrong place as well. There's far too many lanes here now, I can't tell what's going on. Let's just get the basic ones in. So now this side, yeah, this side is slightly wider than that side, so that's good. So that's my corner point there. And then this tower here. So let's work out where the center of that one is. That's there. So the tower would go up there, like that. So that side, that side. And then this line here, go like that maybe. So there to there. So there's a basic kind of box shape. Um, and now I wanted to, this has got one, two, three, four, five, six points on there. The first two are on the corners here. And that, so let's find halfway would be there. So I need to get two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So I've sped up this little bit of the sketch just because there's a there's a fair bit of it and I'm kind of doing the same thing all over again. So lines um, towards the vanishing points and then trying to get the verticals in like as high up as they need to be. And I'm going over and reinforcing lines by kind of drawing a few lines together when I'm quite happy with where they are. And then I start to put in a few lines for things like the windows. So where the tops and the bottoms of the windows are going to be, uh, just to try and block in the basic shapes. And I struggle with the ones on the right hand side of the building a little bit, just trying to work out where they kind of start and finish. So now I've got lots of random rough pencil lines in there. It's time, I think, to start going in with the pen. So I'll show you the first kind of tower on the corner in real time, uh, because I think that it's useful to know that I work really, really slowly. So I'm just starting at this corner and then I'm gonna work out um, first on the right side and then the left. So I'm starting at the top but you can start anywhere and just trying to kind of keep the reference image in mind and uh, yeah, just draw that kind of tower bit on the corner very, very slowly. And I'm making my lines really light and it kind of helps that the paper I'm using is cold press watercolor paper because the pen line sort of, if I use it very lightly, it sort of skips across the page and it leaves a little bit of a broken line. And occasionally you'll see me kind of mark out where a, a line needs to go and maybe add a little dot and then work up to the dot. And I'm just trying to be quite careful at this stage because I know that any marks that I put in now are going to kind of set the pattern for the, the rest of the image, the rest of the drawing. So when I put a line in, I want to be fairly certain that I've got it in the right place. 
And I also want to make sure that I get all of the like details of the stonework in as much as possible. Some of them I just indicate with little lines, but there are places where it kind of becomes wider as it goes down. And I want to make sure that I get all of those little steps in so that I get that sense of it kind of starting out quite thin and airy and then kind of becoming more solid as it reaches the ground. So now I've sped up a little bit and I'm just going to work out from that corner and do the rest of the drawing and just making sure that I get all of those kind of points where there's like a, a bit of detailed stonework or where it kind of comes out a little bit from the building. Just making sure I get those in kind of as, as close as I can. and trying to make sure that any of the kind of the horizontal lines of the building always tend towards the vanishing point on the right because that's going to what's going to be make my building look kind of nice and realistic and then in each of these sections I'm repeating the same elements over and over again. They're just getting smaller as the uh, as the building recedes away into the distance. So you can put less detail on the ones that are further away if you want to. Uh, but yeah, just make sure that each of your little towers, they get closer together and they also get smaller. And then there's a little kind of, there's a bit on the end that doesn't really match the rest, um, but I'll get that in. And then it's time to put the windows in. So we've got these arch windows, they're quite difficult to work out like where the top of the arch should be. Um, and because they're quite deep, they're quite recessed as well, You, it's hard to kind of work out how much of the window that you can actually see so I'm um, doing a lot of kind of look going back and looking at the reference image and put in lots of little sketchy lines for all of the intricate stonework and for the quite detailed uh, windows as well and again I'm using the guidelines that I put in to help me line up the windows so it looks like the the top and bottom of the windows and the like the halfway point as well all kind of happens at the right place And now I'm moving on to the front face of the church. Um, the right hand side was a little bit simpler because it's essentially the same elements repeated. Uh, but this is a little bit more complicated because it's got towers that stick out. Um, so I'm just working really slowly and really carefully and just working away from that corner and trying to make sure that any of the lines that I put in uh, are kind of in the right direction 
towards the the vanishing points and anything I'm not too sure of I put in very sketchy lines to start with and then I can go in and reinforce them later on these little towers have got like decorative bits on them uh, every now and again which uh, actually makes it quite nice to draw because uh, it can be a little bit forgiving and as long as you get the decorative bits kind of in the right place then it can looks all right. And then each of the towers is kind of like an octagonal shape. So if I put a couple of extra lines on it, it just gives it that impression that it's not completely round. And then the little details like the decorative bits just really help it all kind of come together. And then there's quite a big arched window at the front and it's got some decorative stonework on it um, and it looks quite, um, looks quite fancy. But again, just a few little scribbly lines can indicate that kind of decorative bit. And then you can see the top of my head now. That's partly because I'm really focusing on trying to get these little details right. And also because the reference image that I've got is really dark, so I'm having to look at it fairly closely to see what's going on. So when I come to do the painting for this, you'll see it's a little bit out of focus, but I hope you can still see what's going on. I must have knocked the camera when I was filming. I've got some raw umber here, which is a kind of good sandstone colour. And it's nothing like the colour of the 
image which is mainly kind of dark and um, yes yeah, so at one point it probably was that color but uh, it's on a main road so it's probably been stained quite black but this is the base color and I'm going to go and put a wash of this all over I think and I'm going to try and do this a little bit more loose than I normally would just trying something different so And I've got some splatter, so let's add some more. Oops. Okay, and now I want more of a shadow. So I need a kind of a warmish blue. So let's try for the ultramarine. And I'm going to put this in on the building while it's still wet in the areas where it's really quite dark. And then let's mix these two together and paint Get a nice kind of into the road. And then let's take some of that ultramarine and we'll splatter that as well. So actually I'm quite liking that. I think some of the shadows could do with being a little warmer. So I'm also going to add in some violet.
you know, this is quite fun. I'm quite enjoying myself with this. And then I should splat some violets as well. Yeah, go on, why not? There we go. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like that. That's quite fun. I quite enjoyed doing that. So, um, yeah, let's kind of see what it looks like when it's dried. So now this is all completely dry and I had thought that I might do more to it, but actually I really like it as it is. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, what I'm going to do is my reference image here is very dark and I'm not sure how much of this you're going to be able to see on the video. But as always with my videos, I'm going to put this up on my website so that if you want to draw along with this, then you can find it on there and I'll put the link to that down below. So this was a little bit of an experiment. Um, so I did the line work in the same way that I normally would and it's quite a complicated building so there's there's quite a lot of detail on there. Um, but then the watercolour uh, was a total experiment and I'm really quite happy with how it's come out, especially some of these splashy bits. So I think this is something that I'll be trying a little bit more of. Um, if you give this a go or something like it, then I'd love to see that. Um, you can always tag your work um, with Lou Rachel Davis and uh, post it on Instagram and I'll find it there. Um, I love seeing the work that you make. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that with me. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in another video again very, very soon. Bye bye.